Hi, and welcome to this description of the 0-1 knapsack problem. So today we're going to go over the 0-1 knapsack problem, which is a pretty standard first or second or, you know, pretty basic dynamic programming um, problem. And so basically what we say here is we say, okay, so we're a burglar, right? And we go into a house and we see three shiny stars right here, but... Um, and let's say, just for argument, I'm going to make a little, here's our knapsack right here. Terrible knapsack, but it'll have to do. And so let's say that our, let's say that our knapsack has max w equaling 3. So we say that, okay, we know that our knapsack can only fit a maximum of a weight of three in there. And so we look at our three objects that we have, and we see that object one, we see the weight one of object is equal to one. But we know that the value one of object one is equal to two. So, and we say the weight of object two is two, and the value of object 2 is 3. And so the weight of object 3 equals 3, and the value of object 3 equals 4. So let's think about this for a second, and we can say that, okay, so a normal greedy algorithm that would say, why don't you pick the item that gives you the greatest value, like, we're going to max this out. We're going to see which item that we can fit in the bag that's going to give us the most value. And so right away we can say, okay, 3 still fits and it gives us a value of 4. So our greedy algorithm would choose that. But we know, saying here, that if we have a max weight of 3, we know that W1 and W2 here, which both have a weight of 1 and 2, equals 3, and their combined value is 5. So... Now how do we trans now how do we do this with dynamic programming? So dynamic programming really wants us to think about a problem and say, okay, so we have these constraints, we have a certain number of items, and we have a certain capacity in our in our knapsack. So these are the two things that we're gonna have to keep kind of track of as we go along this problem. And also we can use those as sort of our parameters for our subproblems. And this is this is kind of the trick of it. So what I'm going to do here is the stuff that I, each of these cells that I label um, as I go along is going to correspond to either blue, green, or purple. And so, I don't know why I colored these, it doesn't really make any sense, but, um, so this basically says, so you'll see kind of what part of this pseudocode goes into here, and this is the pseudocode that I got off of Wikipedia. Um, so, and it's kind of wordy, but you can see that um, what we're going to be doing here, I'll, I'll just show you. So we have this problem, right? And so we know intuitively that this is going to be our optimal solution. We'd take these two because they would give us our most value. But the computer can't doesn't know that. So we have to use dynamic programming, which basically says that if we solve these smaller subproblems that once we get to this cell right here, which is a knapsack problem of a knapsack problem with a knapsack of weight three and a choice of three items, we'll be back at our original knapsack um, original knapsack problem. So let's start here. So for blue, we're gonna say that so from J right here, 0 to W do M of 0 times J equals 0. So what this is basically saying here is that, and I guess the way I'm doing it also includes a 0 for the number of items as well, but we can see that, so for each, so here, if our knapsack only allowed 0 number of items, we're only going to be able to put 0 things in there, and thus nothing will fit. Same thing here. If we have our knapsack problem of 
zero weight and the availability of all the items, well, all of the items have some weight so they won't be able to fit. So now part of this goes and we say, okay, so now I, which is number of items, we're really only looking at this first item for this first iteration. So this first item, we say, okay, so with a knapsack value of one, can we put it in there? And so what we get here is we go and if w of i is less than or equal to j, so this w of i is saying that if our weight of our current item that we're looking at is less than or equal to the current weight or the current knapsack subproblem that we're dealing with, then we want to go over here. And so we want to max i and j, which equals... Um, it's the max of the one above it versus the max of the value of the current item and if there was anything else, if there was any weight left. And so what we can see here is that, so this first one fits in the knapsack. We're going to put a value of 2 in here. And here, then we compare 2 to 0. We can see that 0 doesn't, we can see that 2 is greater than 0. So now we're going to move on to the next one. So the na ne next one says we're still looking at the first one. And we're saying, okay, so now with the knapsack of 2, we go back into the same here, it'll fit, and we want to max it out. So we're going to compare this right side to this left side. With The left side is really just the cell above the one we're looking at. So what this says, though, is now since we have a knapsack with an available capacity of two and we're only looking at an item that has one in it now we have an extra weight of one so what we want to do is we want to back up to the last iteration go find our value that corresponds to the remaining weight and add that to the value of the current item so two plus zero is still going to be two which is also greater than zero so we're going to put another two in here this is going to follow the same path for this and so we're left here. Okay, so okay, so now we're gonna look at item two here. So the nice part about this dynamic programming is the way that the pseudocode is written out is that any leftover, the real dynamic part of it comes in is we're saying, okay, if it can fit, we're gonna take the value of the current item no matter what. But the dynamic, the cool part of the dynamic programming is, is now we've we have we've solved all of these ones up above it, and our pseudocode tells us that with our remaining weight that we have, we're going to look back at that remaining weight in iteration up, and see, okay, does this remaining weight contain any extra value that we're going to add? And we're going to see that after we go through this, we're going to come out with the same solution right here of these two items. So. So now we're looking at item 2. Item 2 weighs 2. We have a knapsack with a capacity of 1. 2 is greater than 1. So now we're going to go into this purple part of this pseudocode. And since our weight is larger than our current knapsack, we just move the value above it into this cell, which is exactly what we're going to do. So a value of 2 right here. So w of i is less than or equal to j. So in this one, we have a weight of 2 and a value of 3. Change that to green. 3 is going to go there. The real, nav the real dynamic programming part comes here. Because we, we can see that. So now we have a knapsack that has the availability to have two possible items in it. And we have a weight of 3. So we know that the current item that we're looking at has a weight of 2, which gives us a weight of 1. And so since we're already taking that one item, we want to go back to, and we only have one item remaining, we want to look at the cell that corresponds to one item with the remaining weight, which is 1, and it's our value 2. So now we're going to see that 3, which is the value of our current item, plus our 2, which is going to give us 5, and we compare that 5 to 2, so 5 goes here. And so now we go down to this one, and we say, okay, so the weight of 3, this isn't going to be able to go in there. It's too heavy. We're going to put 2. 
Same with this one. This is going to go to 3. And this one right here. So this is going to be 4, right? And so since this one can fit with a weight of 3 and has a value of 4, we still need to find the max of the current one versus the one above it. And we can see right here is that we found that the one containing the two items actually has a higher value, so we're going to pull that 5 down here. And so the cool part about dynamic programming is that as we went along here, we developed some sort of sub-problem relation, which we said that, okay, if our current item can fit and there's a difference of weight um, that's positive, we can look back at the remaining amount of items, which in our case we had two of one, and the remaining amount of weight, which was one right here, and then we add that amount to the value of our current item and place and compare it to the one above it and place it in this box. So we can see that now in the array part three of three, which is our value of our original knapsack problem with a weight being three and a number of items being three, is that the optimal value that we can get for our knapsack problem is five. So this is a one solution to finding the maximum value for the zero one knapsack problem using dynamic programming. There's another way that we can use in order to find out exactly which items that we should keep and that involves using a second array with a keep chart on it. Um, maybe later I'll go over that, but for now this is the solution to the optimal value of the zero one knapsack problem. Nap <laughs> knapsack. Knapsack problem using dynamic programming. Thanks for tuning in.